right now may be the best time to start a YouTube channel if you are a mortgage loan officer. A couple of years ago, I made my first YouTube channel and I had no idea how to do it and I was starting from scratch. My first video was horrible. But even that horrible video was getting people reaching out to me wanting to buy a home. As I posted more videos, I continued to get better and better and I continued to get more and more leads to where I was getting about one lead on average a day. And the beautiful part of it was once the videos are uploaded, then you don't have to do anything else. You can continue to upload videos and they'll continue to get more and more views. But if you wanna take a couple of months off, you can and you'll continue to get views because YouTube is a recommendation machine. It's not like the other platforms like Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, where you kind of have to keep posting and stay on that hamster wheel because those platforms, they value recency. Well, YouTube, you've probably been on YouTube and seen a video recommended to you from like eight years ago. When's the last time you were on Instagram and saw a video that was recommended to you from say five years ago? It just doesn't happen. So by starting a channel and even just slowly adding one video after another video, then you can build this huge lead generation machine that generates you free leads into eternity. It takes more time to make a YouTube video than it does a short TikTok or to post a picture of a closing on Instagram, but it is a million times more effective. In this video, we're gonna talk about every step, basically step by step, when I make a new YouTube channel, what I look at, what I do, what I consider, and what I don't do. Let's get into it. But before we do that, we need to talk about the YouTube algorithm. A lot of people think that the algorithm is this mysterious being that just randomly chooses creators to go viral, but that's simply not the case. The algorithm, or algorithms rather, they're built with the audience in mind. Here's what I mean by that. Basically, the algorithm is designed to show the viewers the videos that they're most likely to click on and they're most likely to watch. So if you make a video that nobody is really interested in, then it might not get pushed by the algorithm. If you make a video that doesn't have a good title and thumbnail, which we're gonna talk about in a bit, and nobody clicks on it, then it might not get pushed. If people click on your video, but they click off really quickly, the algorithm may not push it because the algorithm, again, it's putting videos in front of the viewer based off of the watch history, their interests, the channels they're subscribed to, all of those things. It's putting videos in front of them that they think they're gonna click on and they think they're gonna watch. And that's really what YouTube wants. It wants people on the platform to click on videos, to watch a lot of videos, and to watch more videos. They want people to stay on the platform longer because then YouTube can show them more ads and then they make more money. So in order to have the algorithm work in your favor, you need to make videos that people want to watch, which is your target audience we're about to talk about. You need to make the video in a way that people watch the whole thing and then ideally watch another video right after. So if you give YouTube what they want, YouTube will give you what you want. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do before we start anything is we need to figure out who our target audience is. Now, I don't talk about niches a lot in this video because the target audience is really the most important thing. Now, you could have a niche in finance, for example. There could be five different finance channels and each one of those channels could have a different target audience. And you already probably have an idea of the niche that you want to choose. It's probably something that you're interested in or that you know something about that you can make content about. So now we need to figure out who are the people that want to watch that. And this is very important, especially at the beginning, because we want to be very specific. You know, obviously demographics can help, but re you really don't want to think in terms of demographics. You want to think in terms of psychographics. For example, your target audience, what are their values? What are their interests? What do they do online, offline? What are they passionate about? All those things are psychographics and they're really important because the videos that you make, especially at the beginning, need to be talking to a specific person. If you try to go too broad and talk to everybody, your chances of growing, especially from zero, are a lot lower. So you have your niche and now you have your target audience. Now we need to talk about planning your videos. There's three main video types, search, suggested, and browse. Search is obvious, right? You're making a video that is designed to show up in search results. 
People search something specific, they click on your video, boom. Now suggested videos is actually where most of the traffic from YouTube comes from. Those are the videos that show up in the up next section or watch next section after you watch another video. In order to really grow your channel later on, you're really gonna wanna take advantage of suggested videos. And browse are videos that show up on the homepage, for example. So when you log into your YouTube account, YouTube will show you videos that it thinks that you will want to watch based off of your interest, your search history, what you've watched before, what videos you've watched. So when you're planning your videos, you need to find out which type of those videos that you're going to make. Personally, I like to start out with a couple of search videos that have a relatively good search volume and low competition because YouTube just needs some data on what kind of person would want to watch the channel. Then I would make some videos that are kind of designed to show up on browse so that people who watch those search-based videos, when they log into YouTube next time, they're going to see that video in their browse section. That's why we thought about our target audience at first because it's very, very important to know what videos they're going to click on, what's, what's important to them, what's interesting to them. Then after those browse videos, then we'll make some videos that are targeting the suggested traffic source. Now here's the reason that I would like to go in this order is because YouTube has no data when you're starting out at all about who your target audience is. They don't know who your videos are for, who wants to watch them, who will watch them. YouTube needs to get that data. It's possible to start out with suggested videos, but then it YouTube has to kind of test it out to see, okay, who's this video for? Who wants to watch this video? Then those search videos can supply YouTube with that quick data. We have to make videos that our target audience will want to watch, and then that data will then let YouTube know, okay, you know, these type of people are watching these videos, let's push it out to more people who are similar, and then those, that's where the browse videos come in and the suggested videos come in. You could do it the other way, but I found this way is a lot quicker to get off the ground. Now you may be wondering, how do I know what videos to come up with? One way is to just brainstorm. What things would be interesting for your audience? What things would they like to know? What things would they care about? You could also use the YouTube search bar. If you start typing in the YouTube search bar, it'll autofill with some of the most searched things on YouTube. So you could use that to get some good video ideas. Also tools like TubeBuddy and vidIQ, you could use those to see how competitive those keywords are. And then based off of that, you can think of other videos that would be interesting to those people. By the way, if you're a mortgage loan officer and you wanna learn how we get three to five new deals for our clients every single month, I left a link in the description. You can fill out, find out how we do that. But we look forward to talking with you. Let's get back to the video. When you're targeting search traffic and you're making your search videos, keywords are relatively important. YouTube looks at the title, the description, and also the words in the video to get an idea of what it's about but in browse and suggested, they're not at that important at all. And if you wanted to go a step further, you could actually look at other channels who make similar content, look at some of their videos that are performing better than usual. You don't want to really go to most popular and look at the video that has the most views from five years ago, but if you see a video that has a lot more views and it was re just released like a month ago, then that gives you an idea, okay, this video went viral for this channel, this might be something that my audience is interested in. How can I change the title and the packaging of the video to fit more of what I'm looking to do? All right, guys, now we're gonna talk about the fun stuff. Remember what we said is YouTube wants people to stay on their platform and watch videos and then more videos. So they need people to click and they need people to watch. To get people to click, there's two very important things, really three. One is the idea, which we've just talked about. Two is the thumbnail, very important. And then three is the title. The thumbnail is usually the thing that people see first. They're scrolling, they see the thumbnail, it catches their attention, then they look at the title and then they click. That's the usual pathway that a viewer takes. So the thumbnail needs to jump out, it needs to create some intrigue, some mystery, and it needs to get the person to want to click. One thing that I like to do to find good ideas for thumbnails is I'll turn my YouTube on incognito mode and then I'll start scrolling through the home page when you're incognito then YouTube doesn't tailor any of the videos to your search history it's kind of showing you generally what is working on YouTube right now so you can find some good thumbnail ideas and then 
change those to fit your niche and your target audience and your channel. When looking for thumbnail ideas, you can also look at those other channels that we were talking about that's in your niche and kind of targeting the same or similar audience as you, see what's working for those and then even looking at channels that are totally unrelated to what you're doing, see what thumbnails are working well for them, and then you can model that thumbnail to what you're doing. The next is the title. So that you've made a good thumbnail, you stop the scroll, then people shift their eyes to your title. The title needs to then get them to click. Usually you wanna keep this under 50 characters so that it doesn't get cut off from YouTube, and you can find some really good title ideas by just scrolling on YouTube and seeing what is working, which is a common theme by now, right? You see what's working on YouTube and then you model what you're doing after it. And remember the titles need to create some intrigue, elicit some curiosity. You'll get a good idea of how many people are clicking on your video by the click-through rate. That's just a percentage of the people that were shown the video, the percentage of those people that clicked. So obviously the higher, the click-through rate, the better the title and thumbnail, the lower, the worse. Now, if your video starts doing really well and getting pushed out to a wider and wider audience, your click-through rate will go down, so that's just something to keep in mind, but at the beginning, you won't really have to worry about that too much. That's just something to keep an eye out later down the road. Another very important analytic is the audience retention. This is basically the percentage of people that made it to the end of your video. The higher the audience retention, basically the better the video, the more people that YouTube will push it out to, right? So click through rate is how many people click, then you want to have a good audience retention and a good average view duration, which is the average amount of time that the person spent watching the video. So how do you improve audience retention? Well, there's so many ways, but I'm just gonna kind of give you the bare bones, simple, easiest things to implement right away. First is the hook of the video. That's the first 30 seconds, 60 seconds of the video. It's very, very important because a huge problem, especially that new creators have, is that as soon as somebody clicks on their video, they click off. And that is a horrible sign to YouTube. So what's a good hook for a video? Well, the very beginning of the video, you need to let the viewer know that the, what they clicked on, based off of the title and the thumbnail, is actually what they're getting. If you're not letting them know that they clicked on the right video, then they'll immediately click off. People don't really have a big attention span or patience to see if you're going to get into the content two or three minutes from now, they're gonna see the first, I mean really it's probably less than 30 seconds, but they'll say 30 seconds, and if they feel like this might or might not be what they clicked on, they're out of there. So within the first 30 seconds, you need to reinforce the title and thumbnail and also create some sense of curiosity. Why would they want to continue watching? Another important thing to look at when you're trying to increase audience retention is the pacing of your video. The rhythm of your video, how fast are the cuts, how fast is the story of the video going. One popular pacing right now is the fast paced kind of jumpy cuts, kind of like Mr. Beast does, and it works really well, but that might not work for your channel. No, There's no pacing that really is the way to go or the way not to go, it kind of goes back to your target audience. The very first channel I ever made before the one I talked about earlier was one for real estate. And I noticed that the faster paced my videos were, the younger the people were that saw the video and reached out. And then the slower paced videos were older people that were reaching out. The pace of the video really does affect the people that YouTube pushes it out to and the people that watch it. Okay, so we've got them to click, we've got them to watch, now what? Now we need to get them to watch another video, increase their session time, because YouTube loves that. The longer that people stay on their platform, the more ads that they can show them and the more money that they can make from their advertisers. So how do we get that viewer that just watched your video to watch another video? The, one of the best ways is end screens. End screens are probably one of the most underutilized and most powerful things on YouTube. On the channel that I made last year, the end screens at the beginning were just best for a viewer, and they had about a 5% click-through rate. I started an end screen strategy where I tied the video that they just watched into the next video that I wanted them to watch, and the click-through rate skyrocketed like 25, 
30%. Then all of a sudden we had people reaching out saying, I just binged your channel, love your content, watch the whole channel. So this really works. You can go into your analytics and see when you start implementing this strategy. Essentially, you wanna let them know that what they just watched is very important but if they really want to accomplish whatever their goal is, then this video is going to be extremely helpful because it's going to show you the next thing that you need to do. So make sure to click that video. So every video that you make, what video is going to be in the end screen, have that video in mind. If you can plan your videos with the next video in mind, then you're setting yourself up to blow up a lot quicker. One of the most important analytics to pay attention to as you are publishing videos and you start to get some traction is your returning viewers against your new viewers. Returning viewers means that people who watched your channel previously are coming back for more content. And then the new viewers means that YouTube is pushing those videos out to new people. Ideally, you wanna to try to get that purple returning viewers line as close to the new viewers line as possible. If you have videos that are kind of all over the place, then your returning viewers will be very low, and new viewers may be high, but it, you're kind of setting yourself up to plateau at some point if you're not putting out videos for your audience that they want to watch whenever you upload. And when publishing your video, YouTube checks that video, it shows it to the audience basically in this order for the most part. First is the people who have their notifications turned on for you. And then based off of the performance of that, it may show it to more or less of your current audience right or the current subscriber base of your channel the more people in your subscriber base that watch it the more people in your subscriber base youtube shows the video to and then eventually if it continues to do so well then it will push it out to a lot of people that viewed your channel this isn't the exact order because it does show the video to people who viewed your channel as well as the subscribers but this is just a generalization to give you an idea a clear concept of how youtube does this so after it shows it to people who viewed your channel, then it pushes it out to people who are similar to those people. And then if it continues to do well, then it'll keep pushing it out, keep pushing it out until eventually it's not doing well, right? So if it continues to do well, then boom, you have a viral video. So you've got your target audience, you've done your research and have your videos planned, you've done your research on kind of the best practices for making those videos, you've recorded your video, the next step is to publish it. That's my biggest tip is go ahead, don't try to overthink this. I've thrown a lot in this video, don't try to overthink it. Just go ahead and record something and post it. Every single video that you post will get better. You should see my first video I ever recorded. If you wanna see it, just let me know. Uh, but it is awful, but I, got, I just did it one day. I just posted it, I did it, and then every video after that, I got better and better and better. So let's talk about the growth strategy for your channel. I'm gonna let you in on my growth strategy and how I approach this. First is I start narrow and then go wide. What I mean by that is I'll start with very specific content. I won't really go out of that too much because of what we talked about earlier. I want more returning viewers. I wanna be very specific and not confuse YouTube on who the audience is. I'll throw some search videos in there, then some browse, then some suggested. And then as YouTube gets more data on who my audience is, then I can go more and more broad. I'll give you an example for a real estate channel, for example. So I'm in Tennessee. Let's say that I was making a real estate channel, which I did a couple of years ago, and this is how I did it. I hammered Nashville, just one city, over and over again. Constantly living in Nashville, living in Nashville, tours of Nashville, you name it, I did it. And then eventually, I started covering the areas around Nashville, and those just immediately blew up. But if I would have started with other areas around Nashville at the very beginning, then YouTube would have probably been pretty confused on who the audience is. And after that, I kind of, you know, middle Tennessee, and then boom, Tennessee as a whole, and then even you could go national, and then just real estate in general. That's the strategy that I kind of approach with every channel. And I found it more effective to start with those search-based videos so go for things that have a relatively high search volume, but also a lower competition. Even if it's not a lot, YouTube can start collecting that data on who your target audience is, what your niche is, you know, who wants to watch your video, who will watch your video, who will keep watching. And then as you post your browsing suggested, then more they'll start clicking on those and it'll just push it out to the algorithm. So we've talked about a lot of the things that you want to do, 
but let's talk about some things that you do not want to do and these are based off of my experience there are some people that have some uh, posing views on some of these but from what I've, I've tested these out they didn't work for me they actually hurt me so I'm gonna let you know based off my experience what they are the first is do not share your videos anywhere when you make a new video post it to YouTube and just let YouTube do its thing don't post it on your Instagram don't post it on your Facebook Facebook groups there are very specific ways that you can do this and it'd be beneficial but for the most part it's just better to let youtube do its thing the reason you don't want to do this is because if you post it say on your instagram and people click because they're curious what you're doing and they want to support you they click they see it they thumbs up but they're not interested so they click off but they they don't know that they just killed that video because they when they clicked on it and clicked off it gave horrible signals to youtube like hey people are coming in and watching this and going away so that's going to make YouTube think that the video kind of sucked. Now I will say that YouTube has said that external traffic has no effect on the video. And I've done this. I've have had people come to the video. We've shared it in, in, in pretty niche areas that would have most of the people that would want to watch the video. And we saw a decline almost immediately like to the day. And my theory is, now I could be wrong, my theory is the external traffic doesn't hurt the video. Then they get suggested another one of your videos next time they're on. And since they weren't interested in the first one, then they don't click the second one, and that's what hurts the channel. I could be wrong, that's just my theory. I've tried it, it hurt our channel, I don't do it, and I always tell other people not to do it. And another thing that you may wanna make sure that you do not do is intros, especially long intros. You wanna get to the value fast, because if you do an intro, people are going to just bounce. It kills your audience retention, so it, it really affects the reach of your video. So no intros, cut those out, get, get to the value fast. None of the, hey, my name is so-and-so, welcome to the channel, all that stuff, just go hook value. Now marketing yourself as a mortgage loan officer is very, very important for your business, and this video is going to help you a lot with that. But it is not the only thing that you need to know. You want to eventually start getting into other platforms as well. YouTube is a very powerful one, but other platforms will allow you to have more of a presence everywhere. And in this video, we talk about some of the best marketing ideas for mortgage loan officers. So you'll learn some other platforms that are really effective in getting buyer leads. So make sure to check out that video and I'll catch you later.